here? Uh, no, I think you are. Well, we need a leader. We need a leader. Is that the one to the back? I'm tall, so we'll be the back. I'm sure I'll be one side over the corner. <laughs> Congrats, That's exciting. I told them Yes, we want everybody in here. Kyle, Chuck. No, I wish I That's a big Hey, baby, take a that sounds good. Okay. Um, no, you're fine. Yeah. Just a little bit so we can get a clear cut. All right. Perfect. Oh, you guys look so nice. <laughs> Why do you sound so surprised? <laughs> it's that time of year, I guess. There I don't you know. Go. All right. So I'm going to count to three, and you're going to pretend to cut the ribbon, and okay. then we'll do a real one. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So this is just a smile. So cut it. <laughs> <laughs> just it's been done before with a premature cut, so we need to be careful. <laughs> All right, on the count of three, you are going to legitimately cut that ribbon. Okay. So Tell me a little about yourself, uh, your role for WFHR, and um, how long you've been here. Anything you want to give for background? Yeah. Well, I, I yeah, I'm glad you bring that up, man, because um, when we were out there talking, one of the things that I wanted to mention was, and, and I. I don't like to make things too like personal or, or too about me, but at the same time, I know that that is a one way for our listeners to connect with us is, is the making things a bit personal. And I, I didn't, um, I didn't start out uh, as a kid. I wanted to be an, an entertainer since I was very young, but I never thought that I'd have an opportunity in radio. And back in the day uh, when the old classic rock station was here and they had WFHR, I got a, my foot in the door and got an opportunity. And I was there for a good nine years after that and left the area and got a chance to kind of get back in and came in. And I, I, when, I, when I came back, I was just producing sports, just running the board and that kind of thing and, and wasn't doing a lot of talk radio. And then got an opportunity to do that and, and do that. and. When you start talking on the air, you immediately start to wonder, well, am I reaching as many people as I can? Am I hitting as many people as I can? And this community has been so good about getting, it, getting back to you about that. And it's been 99% positive, the majority of it and everything. But the, the thing that, uh, you know, especially with this, this 80 years and celebrating this, that has really been coming back to me over and over is I'm, I'm not from here. And so many of the people we've talked to and that you'll talk to and everything, they talk about listening to this station their whole lives and, and that. And it's so beautiful to hear those stories. And, and you just can't help but be uh, not only humbled by it, but proud of it. Uh, our family has been in broadcasting for over 60 years. My grandfather started the company. He bought his first radio station at the age of 22 years old. And our family's ever been in radio ever since. And so my uncle, myself, and uh, right now we have stations here in Wisconsin Rapids and in Marshfield and Manitowoc and Sheboygan as well too and uh, you know I always look at whenever I talk to my grandfather I'm always amazed at the stories of radio and how things have you know changed throughout all the years and even myself I started when I was 15 years old so I've been in radio myself for 20 years and uh, you know just in the 20 years that I've been in broadcasting all the changes and uh, thinking back you know when stations like FHR went on, the, went on the air 80 years ago like where they were compared to where we are now it's just unbelievable um, how things have grown and evolved and things like that and one of the cool things about what we do in our industry is know that we're constantly changing right like radio is not going away it's just gonna look differently and it's gonna continue to look differently throughout the years and so as we have continued to evolve with technology and evolve with the changes uh, it's kind of really exciting to think about where we're gonna go in the next 10 15 20 plus years uh, in radio and things like that so we're excited it's a fun industry we have a lot of uh, a lot of great clients and a lot of great listeners. I mean, that's one of the great things what we do is connecting with listeners and clients and things like that and be part of the community, um, especially being in small markets like, like Rapids. I mean, it's, it's all about localism. It's all about supporting local small businesses and uh, that's who we are and that's what we do and that's what our family does at CFO Broadcasting is really make sure that uh, be in markets such as small markets like Rapids so that we can really be engaging and things like that. So. I'm part of being the part of the company. I'm part of be part of the family, and uh, to to watch my uncle grow this company, uh, to watch my grandfather and continue on his legacy at Sea for Broadcasting. Uh, a lot of cool things down the pipelines that we're excited about, but 
Again, thank you guys so much for being here and celebrating 80 years of broadcasting WFHR, one of the oldest stations in the state of Wisconsin. So it's really excited that we get to be here. So thank you guys, appreciate it. My name is Randy Paul and I have done sports here at WFHR for 28 years. My first broadcast was with Terry Stake, who was kind enough to bring me aboard. And uh, it was a Saturday morning that he had me come in and help him out with. And we talked about Terrell Buckley signing uh, the first round uh, pick for the Packers that year. So that goes back a few years. So how has sports changed uh, covering sports in the past 28 years, or has it? Well, the interesting part is just I think a lot of the machinery inside of WFHR, we went uh, from the old reel-to-reel uh, -reel tapes that we would get uh, information from, we'd get things off of the wire, uh, we'd get carts that we would record things on, and now of course everything is computerized, so it's so much more efficient, so much quicker, but it was very interesting working with some of that older equipment, but it was fun too. Compare big city radio to smaller community radio. Mm. Are there differences that you see? Which do you prefer? I mean, you probably yeah. see community, but you know, do you see any stark differences between like those large cities and smaller communities for radio stations and because media in general? I to um, to just bluntly put it, it is so the difference of real and phony. Uh, where, where I listen, to, you know, I'll, I'll be back in the city or something, and I'll listen to some of those stations and some of the personalities, and they're doing a good job, and they're very good at what they do, but it's very. You know, it, it, cookie cutter. You, you can uh, insert, there's not a big change from listening to one person to the next and that kind of thing. The more local you get, the more personal you can get. The more you can be more, uh, like almost, it almost feels like you're just talking to one person. I, one of the first things they told me in radio was, that you don't talk to one person, talk to, uh, or I'm sorry, I don't try to talk to everybody, talk to one person. And I think as we evolve here in media, and, and we get more and more where everybody's got an opportunity to, to pull something up on their phone or, or take in something, it's on us to up our game. It's on us to give them a reason to want to listen to us, to give them a reason to want to tune in and that kind of thing. You do that by being more real, by being more um, yourself and, and also not that cookie cutter thing, but being more designed towards your that audience. Like it's, specifically to what you whatever you can branch out to and in hitting as many people as you can because I think that you when you do that even the people that you don't reach are listening they're they're engaged and and, and more involved we wouldn't be here without Pam <laughs> the heart of WFA. the heart I'm Pamela Hilke and I'm very proud and happy to have been working here for over 43 years I'm from Wisconsin Rapids this is my hometown and I listened to WFHR as a youngster, was on radio in the kitchen, and little did I know that I would be part of the WFHR family and working uh, for all those years, and just it's just it's great to have a radio station like this in our community, and we just reach out in ways that we just really don't know. It's, you know, it's just crazy, you know, how we can touch people in different ways that, you know, we don't even think about. So it's been a fun ride. I've really enjoyed. I've met so many wonderful people over all those years. So, happy anniversary, WFHR. <laughs> if you have any fond memories or would be your fondest memory over the past 28 years uh, just on the air for WFHR? Oh, there's so many fond memories. Uh, Terry Stake wrote a book looking at the beams and he's got a chapter in there where he talks about all of the adventures that he and I had or Dave Miller also worked here for a number of years and Dave was involved in a lot of those adventures and just some of the fun things that happen behind the scenes you know you're you're in a broadcast booth some of those venues are different than others of course and um, just the chance to work together and the fun things that would happen that when we were getting together maybe it was a setup maybe it was during a game things that would happen um, maybe it was after the game on the drive home, the fun that we had. Um, just so many good memories that uh, will stay with us for a lifetime. Um, it's, it's not a, a one-time thing, but, uh, and, and I appreciate you asking that because it gives me an opportunity to bring up Carl. Um, so I, I met a lot of great people in this business. Uh, some of my favorite people I've known in my life in any industry. Um, and I, getting the opportunity to work with Carl Hilke was, uh, a fantastic chance of um, not only working with somebody who knows this business and is very good at it, 
but a chance to um, kind of, I, I take things way too seriously. And, and I'm, I'm way too serious for my own good most of the time. And I've been this way my whole life. And, and working with Carl, Carl was able to balance doing your job and being great at it and being professional and still having fun and still uh, realizing that life is about living. Life is about breathing and laughing and enjoying your moment and being in the moment and stuff. And one of the things that Carl was really good at was getting me to break character. And I, 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 that is something I pride myself on, not breaking whenever we get a bit of news or something, being able to go right on the air with it and that kind of thing. And there are so many times where we're, we're the, the weather's playing and we're just ready to turn the mics on and Carl says something to try to get me to laugh or something like that right before I jump on. And uh, it, 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 I just immediately, as soon as you said that, the first thing I think I can, I can almost picture him over there saying something to, to get me to laugh and, or trying to get me to laugh. And for a while there, I was pretty good. I, st I held Pat pretty good. So... Uh, I don't know why, but we're, he calls me Jimmy once. And I'm, I haven't had somebody who's not a, my mom or sister or something like that call me Jimmy in forever. And for some reason that broke me. I, I don't know why. But I laughed. I wasn't even able to get the temperatures I was laughing so hard. It was just little things like that that he would do to, um, to not only help me loosen up and get used to, to the things I was talking about, about being more genuine on the air, but to understand this business as, as a whole, to understand what we do in media as a whole, that we have a responsibility. But we have, especially at this station, um, where our job is information. We're, our job is being factual. We are not uh, in anybody's pocket. We are bipartisan. We are, it is so important now more than ever to be that. But also understand that there are a lot of people out there that were their interaction, were their personality of the day that we get to, they, they feel they're having a conversation with us. And there's, that's a gift. That's something that we, I mean, we're, not everybody gets to do this kind of thing. Not everybody gets to do this for a living. Um, we're fortunate that we, our passion co-aligned with something that we can make a living at. And we're, I mean, every day that's a blessing. And I, I don't think I ever, uh, as much as I try to appreciate it, I don't think I ever did enough until I started working with Carl very hands-on, very much one-on-one. -on -one. And getting a chance to give him a chance to be creative and fun and, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, I, I, I'm all, uh, so many of my memories are tied to so many great people that I got to work with in Panama and Travis and Ace back in the day at GLX and, and you know, Terry Stake and, and, and Bob recently, you know, here. And, and again, I come back to Carl and, and, and getting the opportunities with him that I did. I, I don't think I'd ever be able to word how thankful I am for that. And, and thankful for that lesson he gave me too, because in those last you know months that he was around and filling in for him in a job that I've never done before, and learning from him and and him telling me over and over again, you know, be easier on yourself, lighten up, uh, that you know you're doing better than you think, and little bits of encouragement, you know, support and encouragement it can cost nothing, but it can mean everything, and and from him I got so much of that. So I recently uh, joined the FHR family uh, back in March and just over the past nine months it's been humbling to see the amount of community to support, just going out in the community and just people saying, oh I heard you on the radio or just seeing uh, all the memories they've had with us over the past 80 years. So uh, thanks for your support and your continued support and I hope you uh, listen and continue to listen over the next few years, next 80 years. <laughs> totally, yeah. Well said. Thank you, well said. thank you. Colleen or Lyle, do you want to say anything? <laughs> You're like, Throwing you on good. the spot, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Lyle's been in for a long time. Me. I have to say that I was here when we had the 60th anniversary, and I still have my cup. We have to tell the 60th anniversary cup, and I tell Pam. So it's been, um, I know I've worked in this community for several years, and the people here are so awesome. They're hardworking and um, they're great people, great business owners. Um, so it's just, I'm just thankful that I can still be here. So, yeah. um, just wanted to thank WFHR. I've been with the chamber 15 years now and they've always made us 16 almost. Um, uh, very comfortable to come in, easy going. My first time coming over here, I started the chamber a couple weeks and they go, here you go. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like scared to death and then Carl, Silky, which um, mm -hmm. Pam's other half, mm -hmm. um, made it transition so great and he was wonderful to work with for the last 
14 and a half years, 15 years, and um, I love working with James now too. It's been great. They make you feel comfortable, they make you feel part of the family. So um, we wish you the best for the coming years and thank um, all your staff for all the hard work with us. Yeah, thank you. Everyone is like, what do you see for the future of WFHR? More the same, or do you think of any changes? Well, you know, in this ever-changing world, it'll be interesting to see how we come out of this pandemic, that's for sure. And we sure hope we get back to some sort of what was normal in the past so that we can continue to do this. And that's one of the things that I just want to let everybody know. I have been so blessed to have the people that I've worked with here, and as well as all of the coaches and the fans, you know, having had the opportunity to broadcast for four teams in this area has been just a real fun time. Getting to know the families, it's been just awesome. And some of those players that I broadcast 25 years ago, they'll come back and still talk about on air with us sometimes. There'll be a halftime and I'll say, you want to come up and chat about it? And we'll just relive those memories. And those are things that you just can't take away. It's interesting because um, coming back here about seven years ago, there was a lot of talk about, well, what's the future of radio and how will it survive? And is it going to go the way of the newspaper and some certain other forms of media and stuff? And I see uh, a, 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 not only a bright future, but a strong foundation uh, with radio. I think that the p smart people in radio realize that we need to reach out to other groups. Um, you and I were talking a little bit about this uh, off air that, um, you know, we're covering the, 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 the sound part of things. You guys are, are covering the visual part of things. You know, we've got our, our friends at the, the Times that uh, are doing it in print. Uh, when we work together, all of our mediums are stronger and our information is stronger. It's better. I think that with so many, you know, if I want to just be in a bubble and I just want to hear what I want to hear, I can find that on social media. I can find that on, a, on there's a billion news stations out there right now that will tailor to what I want. We don't do that. We give you what's real. We give you what's factual. We're, we're, we're not going to let you live in a bubble. We're not going to let you, and that's, I think that's going to get more and more important as we go on. I think that uh, the, the, the formats, especially when I look at like cable TV, or uh, just that in general, like that format in general. I feel one of the things that they're doing, they're shooting themselves in the foot about, honestly, is by doing too much of that, by trying to tailor too much to one audience. If we did that, if we just, you know, we came into WFHR and well, our, our core audience is 50 plus or whatever. If that's all we tried to focus on, that's great and they're taken care of. There's a lot of other people out there. There's a lot of other audience out there that are not being taken care of. Can you please everybody? No. No, not by any means, but you can do your best to try to. You can do your best to try to get to reach everybody. And one thing that I think everybody, no matter what age, no matter where they're from or anything, they will respond to is true, is reality, is, is true facts, true information, and that sort of thing. And I, I think that the when we're here uh, celebrating our 100th anniversary and everything, I think that's one thing we can look back on with pride is that we've done that. I think that you guys at the Wisconsin Rebels Community Media are doing a similar thing and the Times do that. And, and I think that we'll see even more of a connection with all those things uh, that, and we'll all be stronger for it in our community and in individual communities in this country will be stronger from it. <laughs> all right, beautiful, so one, two, three. Yay! 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 Yeah, without our staff, we wouldn't be where we are today. So I want to thank all the staff members, staff and fans, and James and Chuck and Lyle and Colleen for, for what you guys do. We are we're thankful for all the hard work making this a success for for this community. So uh, with that said, if anyone has any questions for us, otherwise. Thanks for celebrating 80 years with us here today. Yeah. Thank you.